Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use the amazing patch tool in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on the all new Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode, it's kind of like a simple episode, but it's super helpful because we're going over the patch tool. And I'm gonna show you all the settings and really get in depth when using the patch tool and show you why we actually use it. And it's one of the most useful tools in Photoshop. So if you don't know about the patch tool, this episode is gonna be amazing for you. And if you do know about the patch tool, stick with me anyway, because I wanna be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get into our image for today. We've got a beautiful portrait of a girl sitting on a bench and uh, we're actually gonna focus right down here. We're gonna be removing some of these leaves with the patch tool today. And that's really the big use of the patch tool is you wanna remove lo relatively large items from your photo. And as long as you have an area to sample or like a source area, which we'll show you how to do, you're, it's gonna be very, very easy. So what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and zoom in here and we're gonna choose our patch tool. So the patch tool is located right here under where you see the spot healing brush tool, healing brush tool, here's our patch tool. Okay, now our patch tool has a couple of different modes. Let's talk about all of our options right up here at the top. Basically we have the normal mode and then we have an option between source and destination and transparent. So let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna create a duplicate of my background layer because I really don't ever like working on my background layer. So I'm gonna hit Controller Command J and that just duplicates my background layer. So patch set into normal with source and not, you know, transparent, not checked. Let's zoom in here. Basically, all you have to do is put a circle right around whatever you want to remove. So you can see I just drew a little circle around there. So we're gonna click right in here and then just drag over to a new place and it even gives you a little preview of what it's actually gonna look like. So when I let go, it basically takes the texture from this area here and places it in here and takes care of all the edges for me, which is really, really nice. Let's go ahead and do that again so you guys can see how easy it is. All right, we're gonna get rid of this stick. So basically I just draw a circle right around that stick. And the key here is really, you wanna make sure to click and drag this to an area that's relatively similar to where you wanna patch. Um, let's zoom, zoom out and show you how to not use this tool. If I wanted to get rid of this stick and I were to drag this over here and include part of her shoe, you're gonna see that the shoe actually winds up being visible in that selection. So big thing, just make sure you drag this to an area that you actually want to uh, want to copy. Okay, now our next option here, let's go ahead and click from source to destination. Now this works in opposite. You can do this in a couple of ways. Um, one way is if you actually select your object, you can click and drag it to a new place and it'll basically just copy it over there. So if you wanted to create like a bunch of little bunny rabbits in your image, you could photograph one bunny rabbit and then use this tool to do that over and over and over again. All right, or you can just do the opposite. You could make a selection here and then drag it right over top of something and it would remove it. But to me, that's not as convenient. I usually have this kept on source. All right, and then our last, uh, our last option there is transparent. And if we click and drag there, basically it creates like, it, it kind of blends the two together. And to me, this isn't as helpful as well. So we're gonna uncheck that. All right, let's go ahead and hit undo. So there's our option using the patch tool on the normal mode. Now, I'm gonna create a new layer, and this is a blank layer, and this is where we're gonna get into, let's just zoom in here, this leaf is our next target, our changing the patch tool mode, we're gonna go down to content aware. Okay, now content aware is great. The idea of it is great anyway, because we can use this sample all layers button right here, and I can do this on a new layer. I can do it on a blank layer. But in my opinion, the content aware patch tool doesn't actually work as well as the regular patch tool. I'll show you why. Let's make a selection right around our leaf here, and I'm gonna click and drag this out, and then hit Command D to deselect. And it may be hard to see, but the edge right here around where I actually did the patch tends to be kind of fuzzy. It, it's not a direct representation. Now you can change your settings here, your adaption. From your scale, you can go from one all the way to five, but I'll show you, you know, like, even at both of those set up to five, the edges still show up a bit fuzzy. Okay, an adaption set all the way up, you're gonna get less fuzziness, but in my opinion, the regular content, or sorry, the patch tool set to normal mode still works a lot better. So although I love the idea of being able to sample all layers and do this on a new layer, I would recommend keeping the patch tool in normal mode and then just doing it on a duplicate of your background layer. All right, let's just do this a couple more times and you guys can see, super simple to basically click and drag, remove anything you want. 
Now, if there is, like, let's say this leaf or something like that, we, we move it over there, and you do have any, like, areas that kind of get patched and look a little bit weird, just circle over them again, and then do another patch. That's my recommendation. Rather than hitting undo, just do another patch. Unless it's like, you know, unless you only circle half of a leaf and then it really messes up, then, you know, go ahead and hit undo. So this is where it works great. When you have like a large area of, you know, ground or something like this that you can actually sample areas from. Now, for instance, if I wanted to patch tool um, anything like, let's, let's just try to do her shoe and see how that looks. I'm gonna patch tool right around there and see what that looks like. Obviously, that's not gonna work. Now, in idea, the content aware patch tool should actually do a better job here, but it's still kind of looking weird. Even if we brought this up here, still look, gonna look a little bit weird. So you wanna use this in areas where you have like basically a little bit of texture in an otherwise large blank canvas. So if you're zoomed in close to someone's face and they've got maybe like a scar or a bit of acne, the patch tool would work perfectly there as well. In our last little demonstration with the patch tool, I'm gonna just take care of this big crack that's kind of in our bench right there. Basically, again, all I have to do is grab my patch tool. I'm gonna just make a selection right around this entire crack. There we go. I'm gonna click and drag this up. Again, trying to match my textures. And when I let go, it's just gonna basically blend the exact same texture in right there. So you can see in really, really almost no time, I'm able to use the patch tool. Let's take a look at our before and the after to get rid of a ton of distractions in my image. Here's a look at our before and our after. And that's it for our episode on the patch tool, guys. I hope this helped out, especially if you've never used the tool before. It should introduce you into something that's super useful in Photoshop. And if you have any ideas for episodes or if you have a question about today's episode, just leave it in a comment right down below. We'd love to hear from you and uh, we do our best to answer all of our comments here on YouTube and on Flurn. Dot com. And if you like what we're doing here on Flurn, just subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can receive free Photoshop and photography tutorials every single week. I'm not stopping. We're just going to continue making these for a long, long time. And we've already made over 800 of them. So plenty of episodes for you to learn. Thanks so much, guys. And I'll Flurn you later. Bye, everyone.